What's up guys, Zeph from Techsaurus and today is a beautiful day here at Techsaurus headquarters. I got my stuff ready to go. We're gonna see how much we can get done in this video. So, my tube cutter came in today. I had to order it because this didn't come with the rest of the parts. Got my tube cleaner. Got my PETG, P, what? PETG tubing. I'm not going with acrylic, of course, um, because this is a lot easier to bend. And I got my silicone tube, which is needed. And of course, my, I was going to say um, hair dryer on steroids, but this is the heat gun that came with all my stuff. So there it is. I'm actually, I decided to work on the cable management after I get some tubing done, just in case I might need to rework the cables in case it gets in the way. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. I'm obviously going to make a lot of mistakes, but uh, I did watch a few YouTube videos to see what I need to do to get it right, but um, this is going to be pretty disastrous, I think. But <laughs> well, whatever happens, we'll see. This is a learning process. Like I said, guys, this is my first water cool build, and I've never done bending ever in my life. And I was actually going to just stick with fittings for the bend points, but I'm like, you know what? I know eventually I'm going to need to know how to bend tubing for my other water cool builds, obviously. So I decided to just go with it for my first build anyways, just so I can get some experience. So we're gonna start small. I guess we'll do from um, we'll start from the in CPU block to the GPU block bridge or whatever you want to call this, and then from there we'll move on to the bottom portion to the pump, and then from the pump to the top radiator. So yeah, this should be fun. So the bend needs to happen at, uh, I would say, around this point. Now, obviously, I'm not using any sort of measuring tools. I'm kind of just eyeing it. Um, like I said, guys, there's going to be lots of mistakes. So I'm going to try and get this right the first time, which I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen, but we'll see. i got to start doubting. i got to stop doubting myself, but anyways. So there it is guys, my first, I think, successful 45 degree angle bend, I'm not sure yet, it kind of looks, I don't see any blisters on here, I don't see any cracks, so I think, I think this looks good, I don't know, you guys be the judge. Okay, so the angle came out right, it's, I think to me, it looks like a perfect 45 degree angle straight down to the, the bridge. Now. It's obviously a little too long, so I'm gonna have to cut off a piece from here. But the only hard part about this is, as you can see, it's not really straight. It doesn't line, align with this, so I'm gonna have to bend again somewhere over here, slightly 45 degree angle, and then run it straight down. And of course, I'm gonna have to cut down, um, cut off a little piece of this too, because this is extending a bit too long. Um, I was always told or I should say common sense is always to cut a little extra that way you guys have some room to work with in case you mess up because you, because you can always cut off a piece of the tube to make it shorter but if you make it too short then you're pretty much screwed and you have to start all over again but God, I think I got it right guys. I can't believe I did this for the first time. Let's check it out. It looks like the angle's right. Look at that. Perfectly straight in there. 
Wow. Wow. I just have to cut off a little piece from there because it's extending a bit too much, but this is... I can't believe I'm doing this. I guess water cooling isn't that hard, apparently. <laughs> Another beautiful 90 degree bend. I think I'm getting really good at this. So it's gonna basically extend all the way here into the top radiator hole over here. And of course, as you can see, it's a bit, it's extending a bit too long. So I'm gonna have to cut up maybe an inch or two. So, and I think the cables might get in the way. So I might have to position it a little at an angle. So it kind of comes upwards, but yeah, so far so good. All right, so after three tries, the most complicated bend is finally done, which is this one. Starts from here, comes down here, and straight into the reservoir. Holy crap, this took me four hours, I think. <laughs> I lost track. Actually, it wasn't four hours. I think it was like more like two hours to do, and I wasted um, actually three full tubes to do this. It's just figuring out when to bend the tube is like the worst, is like the hardest part, I would say, especially for something that long. But it's not perfect, guys. It really isn't. It's not 100% per uh, perpendicular or even parallel to anything. It's just, if I can, if I show you from this angle, well, I mean, it's close enough, I guess. I mean, it's not really like there's some, like, well, for example, over here is a little small kink. I don't know if you guys can tell. But yeah, anyways, I got one more left, and that is from the bottom of the bridge to the bottom of the reservoir. I kind of want to put this in there too. It's kind of like a flow meter. I think it'll, it'll look pretty cool somewhere in the middle over here. Just because the bottom part here is empty, and I figured if I just put this in here, it'd be a nice little thing to spice up the build. But...
There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the tubing is finally done after two months. <laughs> It is by far the most frustrating thing of building a water-cooled PC. That is for sure. It's not perfect. I know that, but I just want to finish this at this point. Things I don't like. The kinks on the tubes. Tubing over here in the corner. There's one right there. It's really obvious. And there's one uh, in that corner as well. But the rest of it is actually pretty close to perfect, if I say so myself. And also for those people asking me why I'm running the CPU block to the GPU, if I have two GPUs and only one radiator, it's there's not going to be much difference in the temps, guys. Maybe one or two degrees at most. So that's not really an issue. And also for those of you asking me to put the radiator on the bottom, trust me, I've tried that as well. First of all, there's no mounting holes on the bottom to mount the radiator. Also, it's really close to the GPU. It's basically touching the GPU, the fans. So it's, it's it, yeah, it doesn't fit down there as much as I want it to work. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to flush the system and then we can pour in the coolant. Also, I burned myself yesterday with the heat gun. So if, yeah, if you're building, if you're bending tubes, make sure you have a guardian or parent nearby. It's serious business. Seriously? Do I need these? I mean, it's like a, it's not like I'm at a lab trying to create the next atomic bomb or something. Like, I don't, I've never seen anybody even use goggles for cleaning or flushing a system. This is, this is crazy. Do not use in a water cooling loop. Step one, remove the radiator from your water cooling loop. All right, so this says I need to leave the solution in the radiator for between six to 12 hours, and then I can drain. So it looks like it's gonna take another day just on flushing the radiator. And then part two is basically where I can actually clean the entire loop with the radiator back on the system, so. And this one actually doesn't take that long. Actually, no, it does. 12 to 24 hours, so another day on that. So two full days just on flushing the system so yeah but like I said guys it's all gonna be one video for you guys all right so part one is finally done all the liquid is inside here all the holes are sealed and I have to wait 12 hours before I can flush it out and then rinse it with actual water. So I'll see you guys soon. All right, it's been 12 hours. Let's go ahead and flush this thing. I can get it open. All right, so now that's drained, all I have to do is flush out the remainder stuff with water. I have to do it like four times, so yeah, I'm gonna get take care of that and then I'll be right back. So you guys know that I try to be a perfectionist and this one tube is really bothering me. I just, I don't, I can't let it go for some reason. Uh, it's no surprise there. And the thing is, I got one tube left. So I'm gonna try and re-bend it. Is that even a term? <laughs> I'm gonna try and fix this by making a completely new bend uh, to try and hopefully match that exact same one. And if it doesn't work out, I'm basically out of tubes and I'm gonna have to accept my fate and move on. But I'm gonna give it one more shot. Why not? I still have an extra tube laying around. What's the worst that can happen? I'm also not happy with this bottom tube. As you can see, it's slowly declining. It's not really paralleled with the case. So I think what I need to do is shave off a little bit from this end and this should help straighten it up a bit. So let me work on that real quick. So 
success perfect bends on every single corner as you can see so I pretty much nailed down the bending aspect it's just now I have issues of figuring out when to bend the tube so the only problem I ran into now is as you can see so this is the before or the previous tube and this is the one after as you can see I bend it a bit too late near the top so now what happens is it's gonna reach all the way to the top of the case so I had to make some um, some changes over here in order for the tube to sit on the uh, fitting or sit in the fitting so not bad I mean I still made it work so at least now I can move on Much better. So yeah, as you can see the fitting is pretty much touching the top of the radiator bracket. But it, everything else is pretty good. The tube isn't really touching the case. I think there's like barely a few millimeters um, clearance there. But overall, definitely satisfied with the second try. Much better than before. So as I was disconnecting one of the cables, this happened. Yep, one of the cables from the 24 pin completely ripped off. I wasn't even pulling on anything, so I think this is the last time I'm gonna be using their cables. So I just contacted V1 Tech, and they're gonna hook me up with some things to not only fix the fans and the back plates, but also I'm gonna be replacing this entire cable set because since the beginning, honestly, I've been having problems with this company, so... Oh look, another problem occurred! The fan Molex connected, well not really the Molex, but the 3-pin and 4-pin ripped off of the one of the cables, so yeah, this is uh, a fun build so far. Alright, so this thing's been running about 18 hours or so, and looks like the liquid turned light blue, where it was originally uh, clear liquid. So it looks like it's, this, it's doing its job, and now I'm going to shut off the pump, and shut off that annoying ass beeping sound, and then flush out the system three more times with regular water according to what the paper says. And then afterwards I can put on, or pour, pour in the actual uh, liquid or coolant I should say and actually guys I think this is gonna be the final build log until the finale which I'll be showing you the benchmarks and stuff obviously so I gotta wait for the cables to come in the back plates the fan grills and all that stuff so and the new pump of course because that's pretty much destroyed
Right when I was about to end the video, this just arrived in the mail. Clutch from V1 Tech, hooking me up with some back plates. Let's open this up real quick, sure, yeah. I didn't go with anything crazy this time around. Just some good looking back plates, to be honest. Well, there you are, just a yellow back plate. To add some more yellow to the entire build, since it's overpowered and black. And check this out guys, some sick black and yellow NVIDIA fan grills for all six of the fans. I also picked up some black and yellow electrical tape just in case I need to cover up some logos or some uh, wires that are sticking out. Essentially if it's not black and yellow it shouldn't belong in my build. So that is why I got some electrical tape to do some slight modding. So the back plates don't fit. <laughs> These are a bit too wide. They're wider than the GPU block. And I just spoke with Hassan and he said he sent the, um, the back plates for the GTX 1080 for the win. I guess he mu somehow missed that. I told him it was for my GPU blocks because... So it's about half an inch wider, I should say, than the GPU block. So I sent him an email. He's going to overnight some freshly cut ones. And this time I actually decided to put a logo because this is a bit too blank for me. Or too bland. So it's gonna have the NVIDIA claw just like the the fan grills just to kind of match with the entire color scheme and uh, style of the build so that should be pretty cool. So I'm gonna take this time and say goodbye. Thank you guys so much for watching the build log. I know it's been so long since the beginning. Um, I'm very excited to start my next water cooled project and it's not gonna take months obviously it's gonna take maybe weeks at most. And it's actually gonna be for my personal system. We're talking about a 6950X, two 1080 Ti's, uh, 64 gigs of RAM. I mean, this thing is going to be absolutely beast. And obviously, it's going to be my color scheme. So, if you're excited about that, leave a like. If you guys enjoyed the build log style videos, I guess let me know in the comments section. Otherwise, my next water cool build will just be a simple time lapse without me talking. But whatever you guys prefer, obviously, I'm doing this for you guys. Um, now, I'm going to edit this video. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Probably over t at least 10 minutes, that's for sure. But next time you guys see Electrobox, it's going to be the finale, it's going to be some quality cinematic shots, you got benchmarks, temps, gaming, everything, you name it. Thank you again so much for following me on this journey. I've learned a lot. Very excited actually that I started this. I'm like pointing at a different build. <laughs> it's actually down there. <laughs> I'm like, I'm surprised I kept my sanity. Anyways guys, thank you so much. Seriously, your feedback has been very important. I've actually been reading your comments and I've been adjusting the build according to, according to the comments that I read every single video that I upload. But anyways, I'm done rambling. Thank you again for your feedback and your support. I'll see you guys in the next one.